played for a long time for Australia, made over 7,000 runs. And I was there when it all happened for him at the start of his test career, where he made a century on debut over in Perth under the captaincy of Bill Laurie. That, though, wasn't the best innings I ever saw from him. That uh, honour goes to the game at Lords in 1972, where he hit 131. That was the best knock, one of the best I've ever seen in Test Match Cricket. And the duo, that's uh, Greg and Ian, then in the last test where Australia beat England and squared the series, each made a century at the Oval. It was a fantastic performance and it was an honour for me to be there, to be able to see the two of them play and play so well. Tremendous cricketer Gregory Stephen Chappell and uh, a very interesting character as well. This is the uh, the new home. This is the new home for uh, the time being in, in Adelaide. Two minutes to to work and about ten minutes to anywhere. So we're Wonderful. we're pretty pretty happy. Just the two of us. So and a beautifully colour coordinated garden. Oh, mate, what would you expect from a cricketer? <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite this good, to be honest. <laughs> the kids have left home and it's just mum and dad now. It is mm. mum it's and good. dad, Darby and Joan. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, well, yeah. Quite enjoying it. I mean, obviously, you miss them not being around the place. But we miss uh, them tremendously. The older two are over on the east coast of New South Wales, and uh, the 23-year-old he's um, just about finished his uh, F18 course in the RAF, and um, he's really, really enjoyed it. So, the youngest is in America on a baseball scholarship at college. Greg, you're now a vegan. Both are, yes. We oh, you, that was the next yeah. question, so you both are. Now, for everybody at home, can you explain exactly what that means? Uh, basically, pure vegetarian diet, no animal product whatsoever. Um, so no butter, no milk? No butter, no milk, uh, yeah, no animal product whatsoever. So basically, if it doesn't grow on the ground, we don't eat it. When you come from a meat and three veg background, <laughs> It's quite a big change to understand the variety because people still say to us, oh, but what do you eat? And you've written a book about it. Yes, the, the Greg, Greg Chappell's Health and Fitness Repair Manual. I mean, the, the great thing about the human body is its resilience and its ability if you create the right environment for it to repair itself. I mean, you can almost go too far to the extent where you've almost done irreparable damage to yourself and if you change the environment and you change the, the food that you, you feed yourself, you can undo it. Uh, the body can repair itself. Uh, obviously you're aware that a, a number of your mates are saying, bloody Greg's lost the plot. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they, they, they continue to say it to my face. And, uh, <laughs> Which is good. That's yeah, healthy. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm more, I'm, I only did it for my benefit and we do it for our own benefit and our family's benefit. And, Everyone's entitled to their own opinion and, and do what they want to do with, with their own body. Well, as you can see, we've moved into a place a little bit smaller than we've come from, so we've got furniture everywhere. We've got stuff stored away all over the place. We've got things stored under different things. If you'd like to grab the other end of that, right. this is the, the secret. Oh, I like houses with secrets. Cool. Hide away, we've got to, now we've got to get out of the way because we'll fall in otherwise. Uh, oh my goodness. Blown this looks like a scene out dry of... Dry cellar. Would you like to go first? Silence of the Lambs. Oh, Am good. I safe if I go Well, I'd rather there. you go first and you can let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real what a test. Bizarre sort of a room. Well, this is uh, basically for the things that don't fit in the house. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff that we still haven't unpacked, of course. Uh, half these boxes, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know. I mean, some of them weren't even unpacked at the last place we we're at in, mm. in Canberra, so uh, we could be could bodies. Be. Uh, <laughs> <anything>. <laughs> Not quite sure. I must admit, I, I, I like my veggies. I don't know whether I could ever become a, a vegan or whatever. So what do you do? What, what, what do you eat? Uh, well, today we this is sort of the lunchtime fare when when we're at home. Right. Uh, basically, we'll just have a, a good vegetable soup, which in this case is the sweet potatoes with some carrot, a little bit of ginger in there. So it's cooked up in its own in the its own juices. The water, uh, so all the nutrition is still in the yeah. in the bowl. Um, some fresh herbs, some uh, sesame seeds, some um, sunflower, sunflower seeds. Sun 
soy yeah. seeds, uh, a bit of soy, uh, oh, soy sauce, sauce. and uh, a little bit of coconut. We might even let Don try some. Oh, I'd try some, yeah. So that, that's basically it for lunch, just this yes. Yep. Just yes. a minute, it's a, it's a meal. It's the last ball of the match, and Trevor Chappell is the bowler. Brian McKechnie is at the wicket, and he needs to hit a six to tie the scores. Greg Chappell talks to his brother Trevor. He then orders Trevor to bowl the ball under half. Rodney Marsh's feelings are obvious. We're going to bowl an underarm. We haven't believed it. That's a disappointment. We're quoted as saying with that incident in New Zealand with the underarm bowling that that was tremendously misunderstood and that it wasn't just a thing about winning mm -hmm. that game or whatever it might be. Yeah, it was more a product of what was going on at the time. We'd just been through the revolution of World Series cricket. We were coming out the other side with, you know, traditional cricket and, and, and the revolutionaries coming back together. We, we went from five test matches a summer and eight shield games to still having your eight shield games and your five test matches, but 15 one-day games as well. And as Australian captain, I was the spokesperson for Australian cricket, uh, and particularly for the players. And I was continually saying to the administrators at the time, you've got to help us. If you don't give us a break, you're going to kill us. And it all came out on that fateful day on Melbourne Cricket Ground, February the 1st, 1981, I think it was. Uh, I probably mm. never will forget it. <laughs> I probably feel um, more sorry for Trevor. I think he's had to put up with it a lot more. Um, so what did you say? Just bowl underarm? I just uh, I walked up to him and I said, how are you bowling your underarms? And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, you're just about to find out. And uh, I turned away and walked over to the umpire and let him know, as, as we had to do, that the next delivery was going to be bowled under him. His eyes rolled back in his head and, uh, again, he had no say in the matter. He just had to go and let the batsman know and the other umpire at square leg that um, that was what was happening. Because at that stage, it was still legal to bowl the ball under him. Is it no longer legal? It changed the next day, I think. Never believed it. <laughs> mistake I was it was the wrong thing to do but I didn't realize it at the time I was unfit to be there I was unfit to be out there I was unfit to be the bloke making the decisions and when Brian McKechnie walked out that day basically I said well buggy this is what I think of the whole thing you know it's just too much unless it changes that you know you're gonna kill us all off now all of those thoughts weren't going through in my head at the time but I realized it was a scream for help I've been asking for help for a long time and no one took any notice. And that was what I thought of the whole thing. I knew it wouldn't be well received. I've got to say, I didn't expect it to be received mm -hmm. the way it was. And I think there was, a, you know, there was some inflammatory remarks that were made at the time that probably helped mm -hmm. add fuel to the fire. Mm -hmm. But then the prime ministers of the two countries got involved and it really just took off. It, it grew a life of its own. Uh, I described uh, Greg Chappell's actions as an act of cowardice. It's uh, annoyed very, very many people, and I share that annoyance completely and absolutely. And I disappeared from Melbourne that night to Sydney because I knew the Melbourne airport the next morning wasn't going to be the place to be. I remember Dennis Lilly, he came up from Melbourne that morning, and he came and saw me about lunchtime, and he said, how are you going? And I said, mate, I'm not going too well. I mean, this, have a look at this. And um, anyway, he said, look, why don't we get out of here? And he organised with the security uh, the hotel to get us out the back door because the front door was just surrounded and uh, we took off to the movies for the afternoon and uh, just got out of the way and just waited for it to die down but it what never really did. Say? I've no idea. I think it was probably something to do with sex, drugs and rock and roll. I don't know. It didn't matter. We just had to get out. I did try that food with Greg, the vegetarian stuff, and I must say that that lunch we had tasted fantastic. The book again was Greg Chappell's Health and Fitness Repair Manual, and it's a book for men. I don't know why women wouldn't use it just as much, but certainly a good tasting diet, and I know it's very good for you. Didn't they look healthy? 
Now, coming up after the break, well, it's not hailing yet. <laughs> Maybe it will do through the break. Coming up after the break, Rosemary Stanton looks at eating fish. We'll have a come and see my garden. And we'll also look at garden lighting. What use it would be in a flood? I don't know. International sport is war without shooting. George Orwell, British novelist. Oh!